Good evening. We have a special edition tonight. It's not going to be like our normal night of boxing because we're going to have right here WBC lightweight champion of the world, Omar Figueroa, his manager and trainer, Omar Figueroa Sr., and his cup man, UFC extraordinaire, Ted Lucio. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a special evening because I've always wanted Omar for a show. He's becoming one of uh, boxing's, uh, what do you call it, super action, uh, super action heroes, the way he fights. All action, nonstop, fans like it, and he's becoming very, very popular where he's must-see He's must see TV, I call it, okay? So tonight, this is his chance for you guys to know him and everything. First of all, Omar, welcome to the show. So good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your team for coming. Hey, wow, what a last that fight last week. I mean, a few weeks ago. Wow. Tell me about it. Tell the fans about it. Well, it's just, we knew it was going to be a tough fight. Uh, we knew he was, he was going to be prepared. But he's been waiting for this opportunity mm -hmm. for a very long time. So, I mean, being Mexican, we know that he has that heart. And then he had the tutelage of Marquez also for that fight. So, we knew he was going to be in tip top shape, so we, we prepared well, and you know I think I think it showed in the ring. What did you see? The weaknesses you think you could exploit in him? His hands, he kept them low sometimes. They, they, Left jab, you know, especially. Yeah, they 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 seemed to gravitate, you know, towards his I guess torso, and then you was going to catch him with one of those shots sooner or later. Now that hit, it was a, that was a head, but that cut him. Fans, it wasn't a, a punch. What round did that occur in? The fifth or sixth? Eighth. 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 Oh, eighth round? End of the eighth round. End of the eighth round. It was a headbutt when you guys were clashing heads, huh? Okay, were well, you were in the southpaw position or the right hand position? I think I was right hand. I went in with the hook and he lunged in with his, with his head throwing he brought, right he brought him in with the right hand. Yeah, and me in too, so. Now, once that cut opened up, what was your first reaction? Ouch. <laughs> it hurt, huh? Yeah, no, I... Honestly, I'd seen people get cut before in the ring, and I think the biggest Ouch. one I, I saw was Valero in the Marco oh. Monterrey. Yeah. And that was a pretty bad cut, too. And I mean, he just walked through it, and I was like, well, maybe with the adrenaline and whatnot, you don't feel it. So after I got hit and I, I could you know, feel the warm blood trickle down my face, I was like, ouch, like that, it, it was just dumping, my, my head was hurting. That's why you said the next round, I got to get this guy out of here. <laughs> Is that what you're that yeah, what you're saying? And I mean, I didn't want to keep getting hit there because it was just going to hurt even more. So I tried to get it over with as soon as possible. Now, when that cut happened, being a dad, what was your reaction? Because this, you know, hey, being a dad and a trainer. No, you know, not just being a dad, but he gets queasy around blood. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what was your reaction? Omar Senior. Oh, my God. I said, yeah, I just stepped. I was on the side, I didn't even go inside until I went in there and I was, I was watching the ring girls. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't watching the cut, so I, I, I got, my so. hands started like shaking and, and seeing, seeing that kind of sporting and I said, man, it looks bad and I, it, that would have stopped the fight, I would have been good for me, I guess, watching your son going through something like yeah. that, I mean, it's hard. Exactly. But, uh, I know what I have, I know uh, as a young boy. I know Omar and I knew he would fight through it as long as, as the rep wouldn't stop the fight or the doctor. Mm -hmm. But I knew, I knew he, would, he would do something like, like what he did on the, on the ninth round. So basically, when you saw the cut, you go, Ted, <laughs> this is why you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> what, what did you do to stop that cut? Everybody. I, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I didn't even know he got cut. I didn't even know he had a clash ahead. Mm -hmm. When I saw him step back with a wince, I said, ah, oh, shit, he hurt his hand. That's what I assumed, mm -hmm. you know, because he hit him with a good shot, I think, coming in, on, and then I saw him step back, he wins, and I, go, and I was thinking to myself, shit, he hurt his hand, you know, going into yeah. the ninth round, hurt his hand, and oh, it was actually... I had my back towards you. Yeah, she had the back right. towards us. It was actually the ring, the inspector on our side said, Ted, you're going to go in, okay? He pretty much, he told me about the cut. He saw and, it. Yeah, he saw the cut. And then, you know, um, I was getting, you know, prepared to go inside, waiting for the, the round to end. I went inside and, and just do what I what I do, you know. Um, uh, simple, basic, one-on-one cut man work, uh, you know. But that, a little the, adrenaline, a little cold pressure. That wasn't a typical boxing cut. That's a cut what Stitch Duran, your, your uh, partner in UFC, and yeah. you tell me it's a UFC type That's cut. A, that is a that is a mixed Can martial art. <laughs> it's not that bad. That's a, yeah, that's, that's a mixed martial art cut that you 
rarely, rare, rarely see in boxing. And it does happen. It does happen. Um, you know, but uh, I'm fortunate enough that I've seen those type of cuts. Yeah. So we don't panic, you know. And, uh, you know, it was cut man against cut man on the opposite side because you had Rudy Hernandez, who's Rudy. another UFC cut yeah. man, working the opposite end. So, and I was watching uh, the replay of Rudy, and he did a great job. Uh, you know, trying to keep the blood out of what's his name's nose and so forth. So, you know, our job is to keep the guys going. Um, Omar's a trooper, though, man. He, like, petitioned, didn't want that fight to stop. Yeah. He was telling the doctor, uh, it's a flesh wound, you know, it's it's a flesh wound. And then um, but Al Bernstein was saying on the telecast that we were petitioning to stop the fight. We were not. Yeah, yeah. We were not petitioning. Yeah. That, that, he did not want yeah. to stop the fight. He wanted to continue. He wanted to go on. And man, I'm talking about literally a magician. He pulled a rabbit out of his hat, knocked him down with the next with a good right hand, mm -hmm. and you know the rest is history. So. What was the medicine that you used? Just basic yeah, adrenaline. Basic adrenaline, you know. Um, actually, one one thousand. One one thousand, you know, which is pretty much the cut man medicine that they use. Um, I also use another um, another little strip. That if you all saw the little strip of, yeah. of gauze, uh, it's called Quick Aid. Stitch, you owe me. Stitch, okay, you yeah. Owe me <laughs> yeah, he's else. Is it not? Because he's the one who promotes it. Uh, it's uh, it's just a, a chemical that helps coagulate the blood a little bit faster and so forth. Um, and Com combination of both you use. Uh, combination, of blood, I think the, the most. We also had an extra minute and a half. We did. We did. We were so fortunate. We were fortunate. You know. In fact, I, I saw Rudy this past weekend uh, at a UFC, UFC event, and we discussed that that. Uh, that uh, break in the middle. Mm -hmm. It was two minutes and 30 seconds. Whoa. It was two minutes and 30 really? seconds. And Rudy was arguing to me, they're going, oh man, the doctor was over in your corner looking at him. I said, no, he was over in Estrada's corner. They were they about were to stop because, this was because, because, because of the punishment, the punishment he was taking. Exactly. He didn't come over to our corner till a minute and 30, 37 seconds. I'm sorry, I calculated that the other <laughs> night. A thir minute 37 seconds. We had one minute uh, extra over and above. The doctor was really not paying attention to Omar um, until he finally came over, saw the cut. Uh, it's pretty bad, but you know what? Um, blood was not going into his eyes. Yeah. It wasn't above the brow where it was real dangerous, yeah. you know, above the eyelid. It was right you know? between the eyes. It was right between the eyes, and that blood was just going to flow down here like a little river. Uh, you know, um, Omar came out, hit the strata with some pop jabs right in the ninth round. Yeah. Um, he got hit once that just opened it up a little bit, but then came the right hand. And yeah, so that little dummy jab just to yeah. get him to commit so we could Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, was brutal. It was, was, a, it was a lazy jab and, it, and he just took advantage of it. And he played possum too. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the guy, other guy goes, oh, I thought I, I I got him now. Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. and he got lax for that. But, but, but Estrada, he was hurt in that ninth round. Yeah. Now, he was hurt, he was hurt in the eighth yeah. round. He was hurt Seven. in the first round. He yeah. was hurt in the first round. The reason why he, he put his hands up to at Omar at the end of the round is Omar hit him with a good liver shot. Yeah. And he tried to like, oh, I can take it. No, that, that sucker hurt. And then Omar played another couple of two pieces on him and the round ended. He was so. a tough, tough cookie. A well-conditioned cookie. He well, came to fight. Yeah. He, came, he didn't come to lay down. Yeah. You know, uh, had a couple little arguments on Facebook with people making uh, critical things. Uh, Omar doesn't like us talking shit, but you know what? Uh, don't call Omar's opponents pinatas. Yeah. That guy came to fight. Oh, he was a solid, you know, solid, durable guy that oh, came to yeah. fight. He mm -hmm. came to, he came with the attitude, I'm leaving with your belt, Omar. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what he was, he was gonna go home with it. But you, you know, know what? That's what makes great fights. You know, two guys that are willing to, to fight, not like the main event that night, Kel Brook and Paul Warder, where they're just holding, holding each other. Yeah. Omar's fight saved the night. And Oscar De La Hoya said that. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, he is reputation in the boxing business. It's must see. People want to see him fight because uh, you know he's giving them uh, that excitement they want when they watch a boxing match. Yeah. They're not going to see two guys holding or two guys kissing and everything. No, you, you want the fans to get their money's worth. Exactly. You know. Um, yeah. yeah, we don't want Omar to take punches. We don't want yeah. Omar to get hurt. This is, his, but we want Omar to go in there and do damage. And if Omar's going to get hit in the process. We all know what the fight yeah. game is all about. Oh, got to commend Omar though. His yeah. defense was, uh, I would say, 100% better. better. He, uh, yeah. A lot of slipping, a lot, a lot of, of moving, a lot of catching, and a lot of good jabs. Yeah, a lot of catching yeah. of the shots, man. Yeah. you see it in, in the replay that he was rolling his head. Yeah, uh, you know, does the over the around? He rolls yeah. with the punches. Just barely made the guy miss a little. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to take the you know take the power off the punch and yeah. everything. But everybody's wondering, Omar, what's next? 
<laughs> the big question, million dollar question. You're gonna stay at lightweight or you're gonna move up to junior welterweight? Let the dad answer that. <laughs> Cause he's calling the shot from what I hear. <laughs> or whatever you guys are. But go ahead, who wants to answer it first? Uh, it's, it's, it's body. Yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to see how camp goes and how my body feels and how the weight comes down mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, I mean, we shouldn't have a problem, but um, there's just, you know, things happen sometimes in, in, in the process of leading, you know, leading up to the fight or to the weigh-in. Yeah. That, because something happens every time. And no, no fighter goes into the ring, you know, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we put our body through hell and back, yeah. and so we have to expect some, I guess, some something bad to happen, you know. So we're gonna. I guess we're gonna see how the first few weeks go. And uh, but I don't. I don't. I'm gonna try at least. Do you try, have it? at least the next one. Try at 140, and maybe after I try, you know, at 140, get my body back into into you know the shape, and maybe we'll go down those. It depends, though. It depends yeah. on the fight. Depends, you know, because who and for what, and uh, well, obviously, you know, how much you're gonna get paid. So. Um, I'll make that extra sacrifice, but if I don't have to, I'd rather not. Because if you have one more fight in you, the boxing fans, they want to see Jorge Lenares yeah, versus Omar Figueroa. That fight would be huge. Main event in San Antonio. I, I, I think there's a bigger fight out there. Is that? I think I think with Oscar uh, talking with Bob Arum again. Terrence I Robert? See, no, I see him Juan against the Angel Big Bull. Oh! In my San God, Antonio. Yeah, you're right. You know, That's a you know, great fight. You know, older bull. You know, even though uh, uh, Juan's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, he's uh, been in the game a lot longer. He's still got fight in him. Yeah. And man, that would be a hell of a fight in San Antonio for the San Antonio fans. But I hear the WBC they're pushing for Lenars to fight him yeah, next. Yeah. 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 Linares yeah. is the mandatory, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, the baby bull. Oh, without a doubt, that's yeah. a that's a battle in Texas right there. So that's a, even a better battle in Texas. Not let him get his name hot, though. It's not hot yet. I mean, he, let him build him up. Then that fight would be a great fight, even Absolutely. at 140 or 38, you know what I mean, a catch weight. But yeah. how do you feel about Lenaris or the baby bull? I think they're both good opponents. They're both, they both uh, bring a lot of excitement to the table, and I think it would be a great main event fight, like you said. Uh, I think the fans would want to watch uh, and see why they, why they wouldn't. You know, Leonidas throws a lot of combinations, and and uh, you know he boxes beautifully. I mean, any, any anyone can admit that. Even if he's my, my next opponent, I gotta admit he has beautiful yeah. boxing sharp. skills. He's All sharp, sharp, skills. super sharp, and everything. Yeah, but you know he doesn't take punches very well. And one thing That's I what do, I see. one thing I do very good is punch my opponent. Yep. So and he does a, he marks up easy. Yes, exactly. So I mean that would be that would he, be. An he will cut. Fight. He definitely will cut. So and hopefully. if you if you know if you notice his last few fights, he gets hit more. Yeah, it can be, you know. Like <laughs> he's got a lot of scar tissue. I had, you know, it's the first time I've seen the uh, United up close. He was in our same locker room, and I watched him warm up. And, you know, he follows direction well from his trainer. And, but you can see he's got a lot of scar tissue on, that, on the top round. That's what I've seen you know? watching him personally. Yeah, yeah and, uh, you know, a couple of those uh, those mean left hooks and, and, and sharp jabs coming from Omar, you know, uh, open him up pretty easily. You know, and we don't, we don't want to, you know, be confident too confident over that because he's good. Yeah, he's good. Oh, he's an ex. He's yeah. a world class, world, you know, former world champion. Yeah. Now, so your next fight, you're looking for San Antonio. If Canelo fights there to be on the undercard, and you want to fight a 140 fight, huh? Yeah, I probably want to try 140 or maybe just a, a fight at 138, 139. Yeah. And just to just to test the waters at a, at a different weight. But um, yeah, like I said, I don't want to have to make 135 if I don't have to. Um, I I'd rather not. I, you know, yeah, if it's, it's worth it, then maybe we'll we'll try and do it. We have, we gotta get together and talk about it yeah. as a team. Like you know, we talked to all Heyman and Golden Boy, and and that's kind of what we decided. That we're gonna get together and talk about it and discuss, I guess, the pros and the cons and the possible situations yeah. that could arise. And uh, I guess we'll go from there once, once that happens. Bottom line is, it's your decision, and you gotta make the sacrifices. And, and, and the suffering to yes, get to that exactly. weight. So, yeah. and you always leave it to the fighter. Yeah, especially you know, you know he's point. He's the man. You know? Yeah, he's the one. He's the one making the way. We are here to assist him. Yeah, to guide and help him, guide him, and be with him along the way. But the, you know, 
when it comes right down to these the one taking the shots. But you know that's big fights for next year. Juan Diaz, the baby blue, and Lenars. Terrence Crawford in, in the mix if if, yeah. if Golden Boy is really talking yeah. with you know, yeah. I mean that'd be the for the number one slot at 135 pounds. But he's moving up to 140 here. Who Crawford? Yeah. So Maybe he's yeah, running he's, from Omaha. He's, yeah. he's a big boy too. Yeah. He's so. a big kid. Yeah. But yeah, he's moving up the weight. I heard, but you know, just them two fights right then and there, and then you can worry about the other guys because that's the fights that people would want to buy, and the money would be good, the fans would see, the TV would buy. So it only makes sense. Why not have it here? You know, when are you going to fight a main event here? Have you talked to your promoters, senior? Uh, that's what we are looking for a, a fight here in Texas, like two here two in Texas or here in the in, here the, in the valley. valley. No, in the, in the Rio Grande Valley, the State Farm Arena. Well, we thought we were going to get the other one against the Montes here, and they yeah. moved us to Carson, and then that place fight again, they moved us over there. So yeah, but the, the, if you remember, uh, if you can attest to this, is Oscar definitely promised him a fight here soon. Next one, don't know. Okay. But, he, but he said it in the rain. No, I, don't, I don't think it would be the next one since they have that day of the show yeah, going yeah. on yeah. in December. Maybe December. after that one, yeah. Maybe after that one. I but think, but, yeah. but, uh, but uh, uh, Robert Diaz says that uh, not even the State Farm Arena, it's more like probably like the stadium right around the corner here. Mm -hmm. would be incredible to hold a, a world championship fight. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. In West Coast, Texas. And can you imagine that right here in the stadium just right around the corner? Yeah. State Farm would be packed if they put it over there, though. Yeah, yes. too over, over, you know, it'd be too packed. That's why they've been thinking about it. But, I mean, having a fight at the Bobby Lackey Stadium, I remember going when I was, you know, six, seven yeah. years old, watching my cousins play football. football, and it would just be, it would be amazing. It would be amazing to see, you know, my name on the board and Showtime cameras and, and the crew there. It'd be, and they have all the facilities crazy. there, too, you know, to, to have it and everything. Yeah. But uh, let's see what happens. Uh, like I said, you wanna you're gonna take this uh, pretty much a tune up and on the Canelo undercard, and then you got two great fights mm -hmm. uh, in the in the uh, making next year. So, yeah. but this question is for Omar's dad. When did you start training Omar? At what age? And and can you talk about all the sacrifices you had to make? For example, being in the gym all the time, working with them, taking them to all the amateur shows, the equipment. Uh, you know everything a, 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 a trainer does, but you're also the father. Can you tell that? Because that's that's a big sacrifice he does. It is because it's huge, uh, huge. I remember I was making sixty dollars a week, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they're already making it, and I had to buy his equipment and gas for it, traveling and expenses. Yeah. And, but we would we would go out to Mexico. We got a lot of amateur fights in Mexico. People would tell me, hey, you're gonna get. I'm sorry, you're going to get banned from here. I don't really care. I mean, you're going to get with some experience over there. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of experience in Mexico. And you, the farthest we went, uh, national fight. All the gloves. You want to stay here? Yeah. Stay, stay but, going gloves, uh, and he went to the national. That's the only big tournament he went to. And, uh, but it's still all the sacrifices, you know, the money, the time, the, uh, you know, uh, you know, because you got he works nine to five. Then he goes to the gym to what nine or ten at night. Yeah, that's a that's a man. Okay, <laughs> it's a man's man. Okay, I, I mean I think yeah. I had a team that would travel more sparring. Yeah, and go spar everywhere, and a lot I had a lot of I mean a lot of experience in sparring with world champions. And since he was young, I mean he sparred with Elvin Badero twenty years ago, and that was three weeks of hard sparring for a while. And I think you know that's what turned him into. A, Really good fighter. Yeah. Yep. I went from a boy to a man with that guy. Can he punch? Oh man. <laughs> Even with big gloves, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, actually, we found out he was using 14s for a sparring. We were using 16s. Yeah. So, so you know. yeah. Like, that's, that's LA. That's LA that's culture, though. They use 14s. Kind of sneaky, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a couple. I still remember. I had never been rocked so many times in my life, and that guy, you know, he's just Solid. every punch, every punch he threw. Was his work ethic was just incredible. And the, the guys from Golden Boy told us, don't even go out there. This guy, that's not sparring. He's going to hurt you. Yeah. So he, he, they told us that he was going to kill me for a while. And then I said, well, Omar likes challenges, and he's going to be a world champion. He's going to get tested here. So um, the first, the second day was the second, third day? But the first day we got to, to Monterrey, he had two other guys sparring. Mm -hmm. Older guys, like 28, 29. Omar gets there. You were what, 19? He looked like 11. And there's a guy there who goes, what, who's this kid going to spar? 
crazy? I love what he was. Look at these guys. And then Omar, uh, Valero was kind of tired, so Omar, Omar gave him some good punches. I said, man, I'm some of these golden boys, so now I know why. So I guess by the third day with the first sparring, uh, the next day, the next day yeah. Valero said, you know what? Give me this kid. And uh, I became his main sparring partner. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. when I got the head of his part, the other two guys, and he, he, no, he they, 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 they were, they were body, body bags. So he you know, just punch. He wanted guys. to be fresh, in other words, and so just follow yeah. him He didn't want to be yeah. gassed yeah. out. Yeah, that's why the guys were even more amazed that we were there to spar with Leto, because he had just worked the other guys, and I get there, and you know, they see me, and they think I'm 11, 12 years old, and they're like, who are you going to spar? What's he doing? Like, oh, we're going to spar with Leto, and they're like, you're gonna spar with that one. Like, seriously? <laughs> yeah. They're like, do you not see how he let, like, how he just beat the other guy? Yeah. And we're like, oh, well, I guess we'll be one of one of three then. Because <laughs> Valero, he made his rep. If you had Edwin Valero, the great, the late great Edwin Valero, uh, he made his reputation uh, in the LA boxing scene when he moved over to the Southern Cal scene, going to the gyms, just brutalizing everybody, just tearing everybody up. But LA, they have that mentality. Yeah, they use 14 ounce cups when they spar. They don't have the what 16. Was he? was he 28? No, with 28 knockdowns? Okay. Yeah, with a uh, knockout. Yeah, he was 28. 28. 28. Yeah, he, everything was a knockout. Yep. Man. That guy was a, an animal. Oh. You know, and he was training to fight DeMarco that fight, if I, if I recall. Yeah, he told me, he's like, you were way harder. Like, you, you killed this guy. He told me, you'll beat DeMarco. Yeah, because he knocked him out in what? The ninth round. Ninth round, round, yeah. Oh, he brutalized him. Yeah. yeah. It was a, ooh. Oh, that was one of the worst and beats. Did, did DeMarco beat Linares? Linares. Yeah. You know? Stopped him out. Stopped him. Yeah, stopped him. Stopped him first round in the first No, no, he wasn't that guy that beat him. No, that, that was, was uh, that was guy, guy, Yayo Thompson. Yayo Thompson beat him too. Knocked him out. Second round. No. Second round. Yeah, he, he beat him. Linares. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what round, but I think DeMarco did beat him in the first round. No, he was. it went like in the eighth or ninth or tenth round. He got cut. Then they YouTube, eventually stopped YouTube. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't remember but who Google. it was that stopped him. The buddy. Oh, oh man. Yale. Yale Thompson beat him. Yale Thompson, heavy-handed guy that beat Canelo's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At yeah, he's, yeah, he stopped him. Uh, see, Lenar says dig a great chimp. That's why I think it's a, a good fight for him if he can, you know, make... Well, he'll find that he out. He can run enough. Yeah. <laughs> but... That's oh, what yeah. you're doing, but yeah. Your brother. What plans do you have for your brother to turn pro to fight on the same card as Omar to build him up in the next attraction? That's a plan. I mean, that would be uh, Brandon. That's Brandon Figueroa. Uh, he didn't want. He didn't want to. He wants to get paid for every interview he does. So, you know, <laughs> he's all Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> now Brandon is what 17 years old, the state amateur, state Golden Glove champion, and his plans is to turn a pro next year. Yeah, the plan is to turn a pro next year. Uh, He's got a pro style like Omar, and mm -hmm. he wants to go pro, but we're going to get some amateur fights during this year mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Uh, Golden Boy is already looking into him. He was Al Heyman. Talk to me about him, and you know, we're taking a step at a time. It only makes sense if he fights here. His brother, you know, little brother fights yeah. on the undercard. But every time, you know, to build him up and everything. Yeah. So, But next week, no, this week coming up, we'll be in Las Vegas for the Mayweather Madonna fight. Omar is going to be doing the first ever boxing fan expo like UFC does. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So can you talk about that, Omar? Well, it just like an opportunity that was presented to us and, you know, we were just waiting to take advantage. I didn't know. It was, I'm not really involved with the whole boxing, I guess, scene or what's mm -hmm. going on. I didn't know it was the first one ever. Um, and when we got invited, I guess my dad just presented, you know, the opportunity to me, and I was like, well, yeah, I mean, we'll, I mean we're going to be there either way, so might as well get some more exposure and meet some fans and, you know, yeah. just hang out, I guess. That's the smartest thing boxing has done, because UFC, they've grown their fan base by doing that, having a fan ex expo, having all their top fighters go out there, you know, meet the public, and that's... They do, that, they do that at the events, and if you notice the Golden Boys... When do they do that? They do that at all their events. You're always going to run into to some fighters. They they fly into fighters all the time to events, even though they're not fighting. And that's what Golden Boys has been doing. If you pick, take a look, you saw Danny Garcia and his fight. You know, you see, uh, uh, what's this called? Uh, um, Maidana. Maidana, and who's the... the uh, uh, the young kid, the, uh, the welterweight, that nobody wants to fight with the long oh, hair. Keith oh. Thurman. Keith Thurman. Thurman. Uh, they're, put, they're putting all their fighters accessible to the fans because when Oscar was around, you couldn't get near him. Yeah. Now, these yeah. fans, 
to get yeah. near their fighters and they're yeah. putting the fans in touch uh, with the fighters and, yeah, that's and it's bringing boxing you know back back where people want to go meet these people and but, touch these people but they, like the fans already know oh i want to go to the even if they're not interested in the fights they're like oh we might run into yeah. you know one of our favorite boxers or whatever yeah. Yeah. they're there now the the, the fighters are, are are going to the events uh, so they can show face sign autographs yeah and public public relations but absolutely and i think that's real important for the sport well the boxing expo is the first time they ever done it so it's uh, it's going to be uh, you know it's going to be a good experience and uh, a lot of people are going to turn out over there you know omar will be there james tony riddick Bo, all old terry norris all the champions of now and the oh, past are going to be there too oh yeah just, just there. james way is going to be there james Lay yeah i saw that there. because he's doing you know some some uh what's this called uh PR for his oh, upcoming, for upcoming the, show. Uh, for, oh, yeah, this yeah, for the show. Yeah, yeah. for the show. Yeah, the 29th. He's doing some PR, uh, you know, with uh, some of the other local boxers that are going to be fighting. That's going to be amazing. I believe uh, the Laredo uh, champion, what's his name but from back in the day? Orlando Canazales. Probably going to be there. Orlando Canazales, Hall of so, Famer. Yeah, Hall of Famer. So, you know what? It's it's good. The people, like I said, get to see the old and, and the new. And the new coming up, which new makes it good up. and everything. Yeah. So, if you're in Vegas, Go out to it, support it, because it's going to be packed over there. It's going to be what? Think Mexican Independence Day. All the fans are going to be there to fight. The 13th. The 13th, and a lot of fans are probably going to attend that. It starts at 10 in the morning, Omar, to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. But until, Omar, until fight time, huh? Omar yeah. ain't going to be there for. He'll <laughs> <laughs> be there for what? A couple of hours and. Go have lunch. <laughs> and have a nice day <laughs> to the fans. Yeah. Now, the last, last thing I want to talk about, uh, you know, it's a real sensitive issue because it happened in my family is. Uh, your wife, she went through a bad case of, can you explain yeah. it? Yeah, it was, uh, they caught it early, so. It was breast cancer. Yeah. Breast cancer. Yeah. Thank God. It early, so everything's, everything's good. She's, she's doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you heard she had it, what, what was your reaction? Like, oh my God, huh? Mm, well, she, uh, the doctor said it wasn't that bad, so she got surgery in Mexico. And, uh, and then she got checked here again, and then she no, got it's surgery. She didn't know what it was. If at first she just felt the lump, and yeah. so she got it checked in Mexico, and the doctor told her, oh, it's just a grease, you know, grease mm -hmm. ball or whatever. So they did surgery, and they took it out, and then they studied it, and they found out that it was uh, cancerous, so that's when, when they told my mom, she was like, oh, well, this is kind of serious. So, yeah, it's so serious. <laughs> she went to MD Anderson in Houston. The best hospital in the world for cancer. Yeah, for cancer. So, I mean, she didn't take anything lightly. She took every precaution possible. And uh, she, you know, she she does what she, has, what she has to do to, you know, to treat it and make sure she's there for us. Because that's her yeah. concern, you know, being there for us. And uh, I didn't even find out because I, I was training at the time. So that oh, was there you, there you for, for the Aracawa. Yeah. That, that's when I was in California for the Koto Aracawa yeah. sequence. So I was gone for a while, and I guess that's when she found out. And um, I mean, she didn't she didn't tell me until I got home, and she's over here. Oh, well, you know, it turns out that I have breast cancer, and I'm like, oh really? And how are you planning on telling me? And she's like, well, I didn't want to, you know, because that's easy distract you. Yeah, easy freak out. Oh yeah, because I mean, even though it wasn't bad. It, the, the thoughts that go through your mind. Cancer. Yeah, not breast cancer. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's, I've had so a lot, just, it's tough. A lot of friends that died from that. That's, a, you know, when you get that, my mom had it twice. And, you know, when you have, when you, when my dad had prostate cancer, when you, when you go, when you hear that word, it's like, it's like a death sentence. Like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe not death sentence, but it just changes everything. Yes. You start thinking the worst goes through your mind and then mm -hmm. you hear chemo, you hear yeah. radiation. And it's just like that's the stuff you see related to death. You know, it's, yeah. it's all related. It all, it all correlates with death and it's just, it's, it, yeah, it's horrible. How is, your, how is your mom, she went through those treatments of chemo. How, how did she do it? She did pretty, like my dad says, she's the hell she came with. If she was at 100% before, she's at 150% now. She It's like it even it gave her superpowers or something. Really? Yeah, it just no, came back. Her, maybe. <laughs> 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 she came back even stronger. It's just, but that's just the way my mom is, you know. She, 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 she's always, I guess, 
I guess it was it was early on the stage, and that's why I guess everything. Went yeah. Out. Yeah, everything came out yeah. really. It went really smooth. Yeah, so if you catch if you catch her early, you're gonna have good positive results with the chemotherapies that they have now. Yeah. With the medications that they have now, uh, my ex-wife had breast cancer uh, in '94, '95, uh, and um, I mean mm -hmm. we were just at the tip of some of the breast cancer like, medications and the chemotherapy. Very beginning, he's gonna try that style. Different. I mean, he doesn't have to fight him anymore. He's gonna find someone else to fight. So the first, I think the first one was just the bait to 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 get the second one. Yeah, on. and that's the switch. And that's it. <laughs> the bait and switch. Now he's gonna put on a board and fight. Now, now, <laughs> uh, I, I believe so at least. But, I believe. You know, I, I hope believe, I'm wrong. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, you know, everybody was know. excited about the first fight. You know, but uh, you, you saw it. it you know, it transpire. It took a little bit longer than normal. You know, yeah. it takes him two rounds to gather data and then pick his opponent apart like he did with Guerrero. But you know, it took him a lot more rounds. The rounds were a lot more even. Yeah. The punch stats were a lot more well, even. Uh, one of one of the judges had even, so yeah. yeah. You know, so um, but I got a feeling that he's uh, you know, and, and everybody says he puts on a boring fight. He actually stands in front of his opponent in a well, pocket. Yeah, he's been doing that a lot. Yeah. He stands there. He and he'll you know counter a lot. Counter a lot. He'll pull a lot and, yeah. and you know get missed a lot. Um, so you know. He's a lot more exciting than uh, than 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 before. He he ran a little bit more last time. But yeah, but I think this fight, I think this fight, he's gonna he's gonna you know apply that style from the very beginning. Yeah, the he already he already knows how he yeah. fights. I think yeah, the way he's exactly. fought the last few rounds exactly. and, uh, in the in the first fight, that's the way he's gonna fight. You know, this next fight, I think it's yeah. just he's just gonna pick him apart. So, if, how do you think? How do you think Madonna's going to come out? Is he going to come out more aggressive, and is he going to be able to maintain that aggressiveness? Same like he did, but hopefully, or is he going to fade like he did before? Same, fight the same style, but just hopefully he can maintain it for twelve rounds. Will, will he throw in a little bit more dirty tactics in there? I mean, there was a knee strike in there for crying out loud. Oh, okay. He tried to. I think King going to get away with this fight. <laughs> yeah. He had it first because the ref's going to be a little bit more. I think it's Kenny Bayless. So Kenny think, Bayless is going to be the ref. Yeah, Ken, yeah. Kenny will be. Uh, We'll put an end to that stuff and start deducting points, but it's you know. I'd hate to see it come down to that though. Yeah. Point deductions where the fight's going to be close at the end of the fight with with. And it could you know, be. I'd hate to see it like that. And it could. So the fans it, are getting robbed out of it. And know. it could be, you know, because Madonna he's always in a good, mm -hmm. you know, tough fight. But you know, just being in the atmosphere, you know, big fights like that, you know, the uh, you know the sold out arena, the fans, uh, the celebrities, the famous athletes, uh, you know, entertainers. It's uh, you know something uh, in the just in, just being in Vegas that week is going to yeah. be a, a treat. It's an experience. Yeah, yeah. So, it you, is. Don't, you don't even have to go to the fight. You just watch it on full circuit and just be there. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, walking around the hotel and everything. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. nothing. It's not like a not like a big fight in yeah. Vegas. That's why they call it the fight capital of the world. Okay, we're gonna close up the show. Anybody have anything to say or to thank? Uh, tell Lucio, what do you have on your agenda? Uh, agenda. Let's see. Obviously, uh, UFC time. next week. Uh, UFC in Japan next week, and Jeez. then uh, and then uh, Nova Scotia. I just going to Brazil and going to Mexico City for Cain Velasquez versus Verdun. So. Oh, got a busy schedule. How far? How, how long is that trip in Japan? From uh, it's about fourteen hours. That's not bad. Shorter than my last. I went yeah, to okay, Macau, China. I went to Macau, China. China. 28, 28 to Macau, China. Beautiful <laughs> town, though. I see why Manny Pacquiao's yeah. fighting over there. Uh, it's you land. It's like you're landing at the Vegas Strip because the hotels are identical. It's a beautiful town, and um, just maybe, like Vegas, maybe, maybe one day Omar gets to fight in Macau, China. Yeah, fight so the you never, you never fight know. the Chinese national champion. Well, that's a new fight. That's a new fight venues out there in the Venetian. So you know, when, yeah, that they made that forty-five billion dollars last year, so yeah. <laughs> or something like in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. But how about senior? Anything new coming up, or just getting ready for the next fight? Omar, you back in the gym training, or just waiting for this call from Golden Boy or Hayman? Yeah, I'll just wait and get the, the clear from the doctor. Uh, I, I can go start working out now, you know, start losing the weight and, and sweating a little bit, getting back in, into rhythm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like you said, you know, I just want to thank everyone that's supported me. I want to take, I uh, want to thank Omero from Kato Sushi for, you know, uh, hosting this, this, this. Kato Sushi. So, yeah, Kato, Kato Sushi. Kato yeah, Sushi. sorry. So we got, we got to yeah. give them the props. Look at all this. Great, lovely food they have here. Yeah. And so, and that's just the tip of the, of the iceberg. So, I mean. And right they out. have them everywhere in the valley. Kato Sushi. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone. You know, Stormy Cutter is helping out a lot too. Stormy's. Um, Martin. You know, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, Martin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Poncho's always, everyone. 
thank you our, my sponsors you know my team so what's the goal of uh, EDC okay. what's going to see uh, David and Carlos Robledo and uh, just everyone pain pain you know, pain or a motor group pain is that it um, you would drive through the express so you can see the big uh, yeah the big yeah. congratulations yeah. on my team <laughs> ever since so that's, I'm just thankful and I'm, I'm I love being from Mexico you know it's a small town I know pretty much everyone here and, and yeah, I feel like you know like I don't feel like people are gonna harass me or anything walking down the yeah. street. You know, I feel comfortable. You know, doing doing yeah. my thing here, and it, it's a great feeling. They, they leave you alone. West yes. is a great town, and it is now on the map. It's it growing now <laughs> on the map. Okay, well, the WBC champion, the WBC here, so lightweight, champion lightweight champion, champion resides here, and this yeah. is a great town. So, so that concludes the night. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we had a great episode tonight with the WBC lightweight champion of the world. Soon to be moving up to junior welterweight to get one of those belts. One of those, yeah. <laughs> Thank or you. Two. Okay. <laughs> or two or three. Thank you.